Churches and Michael and all angels in Inverness for our Mass on this third Sunday in Lent. So welcome to everybody who joins online as we offer our prayers, our praise, our adoration before the sacrament and pray that we know Christ's presence with us where we are as we present ourselves in his service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading in the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or your alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. The word of the Lord. A reading in St Paul's 
first letter to the Corinthians. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. In the cross of Christ I glory Turning o'er the racks of time All the light of sacred story Gathers round its head sublime When the woes of life o'ertake me Hopes deceive and fears annoy Never shall the cross forsake me, though it glows with peace and joy. When the sun of bliss is beaming, light and love upon my way, from the cross the radiant streaming, adds more luster to the day. Pain and blessing, pain and pleasure, by the cross are sanctified. Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. For God alone my soul in silence waits, from him comes my salvation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
reading in the Holy Gospel according to St. John, in the second chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On occasions when I'm preparing my sermon, there will be one word or one phrase from the readings of the day that starts off my thinking process. If you joined the service last week, you will remember that it was the word must, and how some things which for most people, most of the time, seem sensible behaviours, but require laws to be passed so that Everyone should adhere to the social consensus. We heard today the passage from Exodus which lists the Ten Commandments, the laws which in the narrative of Moses' encounter with God, God felt necessary to lay down because of the inability of the people of Israel to remain faithful to the covenant that God had entered into with them. God had been their guide on the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Not just a guide in giving them compass directions like some divine Google Maps, but a guide in showing them how to be his people, how his people must behave, both on the journey as a nomadic people travelling from place to place, and then as a settled community in the new land. And it seemed guidance was not enough. Divine command was necessary. And even as we read through the pages of the Old Testament, the people of Israel continue to find it difficult to remain obedient to the covenant, preferring their own human ways of organising their society rather than the divine way. When they settle in the new land, they want to copy the ways of the neighbouring countries and have a king rule over them rather than have the rule of God. And as we continue reading, God grants them what they desire, even though it will lead to dreadful consequences. And we come to the point when King David is on the throne. 
and he has a desire to build a temple, a house in which God might dwell. And you'll remember the conversation between God and David. And God says, would you build me a house? Rather, I will build you a house. And of course, God did not mean a building of bricks and mortar, but a house of people, a house of descendants, the house of David, a nation. And as God made that promise to Abraham and to Jacob, so he makes it again to David, that there would be a people who were the children of God. So David doesn't get to build the temple. His son Solomon builds the temple of stones and mortar, but that will be destroyed by the Babylonians and rebuilt after the Jewish exile. Then it will be desecrated by the Romans, but renovated and re-consecrated in the time of Herod the Great. And it is this temple that Jesus enters to find the extortionate practices of the money changers and the sellers of the livestock for sacrifices. And we come to the phrase that caught my attention. Zeal for your house will consume me. This episode, which is referred to as the cleansing of the temple, is told slightly different by the three gospel writers, Matthew, Mark and Luke. Though each of them locates the event at the beginning of the week before Jesus' arrest, the beginning of Holy Week. In the fourth gospel, the event, while still being associated with the time of Passover, happens at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And I find it reminiscent of the account in Luke's Gospel of Jesus as a young boy when Mary and Joseph, having taken Jesus to Jerusalem for the Passover, and on their way home discover that he's been left behind, go and find him in the temple with the teachers, amazing them, if not upsetting them with his wisdom. And Jesus' response to the anxiety of Mary and Joseph was, I must be about my father's business. So both in Luke's account and in John's account, Jesus makes a claim about his authority to be in the temple, that building of stones and mortar, the house of God. That, as is usually the case with John's gospel, the words carry various levels of meaning. And the phrase of scripture which John tells us the disciples remember, zeal for your house will consume me. It could be understood as referring to the temple, the house of God, the building of stones and mortar. But it might also refer to that different house, the house of David, the children of Israel, the children of God. It's not just that the sanctity of the building was being desecrated by the extortionate practices, but the worshippers, when they came, were being made victims of that extortion. They were being sinned against, and so God was being sinned against. Whatever the high ambitions of the religious authorities might once have been to build a holy place and to keep it holy, that holiness, the presence of the divine, had been overshadowed by human greed and corruption. The word zeal can have a negative meaning of jealousy leading to anger. The Greek word zealous in the gospel is linked to the word zelotes used in Exodus of the phrase, I am a jealous God. But it can also be understood positively as a strong conviction, having a strong will to make an effort for the right outcome, 
even to the length of sacrifice. But of course that might also involve a righteous anger. And in this episode in the temple, Jesus certainly portrays that expression of righteous anger, deliberately making a whip of cords to drive out the animals and the dealers and giving what may be a new commandment. You shall not make my father's house a marketplace. The temple authorities demand a sign, some indication of Jesus' authority. And in return, Jesus offers a challenge. But again, there is a play on words. Destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. They did not understand. This temple, this building of stones and mortar, had been undergoing renovation since the time of Herod the Great. Could Jesus rebuild it in three days? But John explains to the reader that Jesus was talking about himself. Jesus, the temple, the holy presence of God. And in referring also to Jesus as the holy presence of God, the zeal of Jesus would make that sacrifice of himself on the cross for the house of God, for the children of God. And it's that sacrifice that Paul refers to when he says, the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The sacrifice on the cross may be seen as foolish and weak, as the point at which human cleverness destroyed the rule of the divine. It can be seen as the most difficult of challenges to accept as being the way of salvation. That it is the way of salvation, the way of God showing his love and forgiveness for his house, his people. It's that way of love and forgiveness that in John's telling of the gospel story begins with Jesus' challenge in the temple when the disciples recognised his zeal for the Father's house. Or that Jesus in Luke's Gospel says, I must be about my Father's business. So as Jesus refers to himself as the temple of God, the location of the presence of the divine, so God in Christ offers to make his home with us and in us. In the later chapters of John's Gospel, in Jesus' words to the disciples in the upper room, he tells them, I and the Father will come to you and make our home with you. We will abide in you. In the older liturgies of the Church, there was an opening verse in response. I will go unto the altar of God, even the God of my joy and gladness. During this time of lockdown and locked churches, I'm sure we've all missed going to the altar of God, of coming to this building of stones and mortar, to this house of prayer, and we will rejoice when we can do that again. But I hope that during this time, as we have joined in these services online, that we've been able to respond to Jesus' words, that he and the Father will come to us and abide in us. They will come to us. And that, as God's children, each of us, God's child, the divine presence locates itself within us. And with Jesus, we can speak of this temple, which should not be a marketplace of human desires, which ignores, if not commits, the exploitation of God's people and God's creation, but rather is a house of prayer. 
that when the lockdown is over, we may be like the children of Israel, come out of Egypt, having God as our guide. And God will lead us to the house of God. We will go with zeal, with conviction, to the house which is of stones and mortar, to the God of our joy and gladness. But perhaps more importantly, we should go with zeal, with a desire for righteousness, to the house of God, which is God's people, to those who need God's presence with them by having our presence with them. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate as the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he arose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In this season of Lent, as we think of Christ cleansing the temple, we pray that God's Spirit will aid us as we seek to cleanse ourselves, God's temple, that we may be faithful in our commitment to the Gospel. We pray for God's Church, houses of prayer throughout the world, gathering of God's children who strive to walk the way of the Gospel. We pray for the life and witness of ourselves in this congregation, that even at this time when churches are closed, we may be faithful in prayer and active in God's service. We pray for Bishop Mark, the clergy and people of this diocese, and for our Scottish Episcopal Church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As Jesus spoke out against the abuses perpetrated in the temple, so in our world, where so many of God's children are victims of exploitation and oppression, while others are perpetrators of injustice and corruption. We pray for the ones who are the victims, for the people of the Yemen, the people of Myanmar, the Uyghur people in China. We pray for all who are oppressed or who experience prejudice and violence, those who feel they have no choice in their lives because of their struggle to survive in conditions of poverty homelessness, abuse or oppression. In a world damaged by the effects of human desires, we pray that God's Holy Spirit will be a guide to men and women, that they will choose to do what is right for the greater good of our society and for the future well-being of our planet. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for those in parliament and government in this country, in Westminster and Holyrood, that they will act responsibly for the good of the people of this land in this difficult time of pandemic and economic challenges. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As Jesus spoke out to cleanse the temple, we pray, Lord, that you will speak words of hope and healing to all who suffer in our world. We pray for the men and women in the healing professions who treat those who are ill in body, mind or in spirit, those in our local hospitals, in the community and in care homes. We hold before you those who have asked our prayers. Jean McLean, Marion Cuthbert, Anne Bignall, Mary Mulligan, Elsa Redmond, Michael Manson, Heather Cuthbert, Julia Sinclair and Father Gerald. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your son Jesus spoke of destruction and rebuilding of the temple which was his body. We give thanks for the promise of resurrection and of new life in your eternal kingdom. And we pray for those whose memories we cherish, that they and we with them may come to that place of glory. We commend to your eternal care the soul of Anne McLennan, recently departed, and we remember those of this congregation whose year's mind is at this time. George Haig Fairburn, Donald McDougall Robertson, Catherine Lees, Alan Mull, Charles Woolley. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a moment of quiet we offer our own prayers and lay before God the matters that concern us. Heavenly Father, accept these and all our prayers, which we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let, Let us share his peace. Praise to the holiest in the height and in the depth be praise in all his words most wonderful most sure in all his ways O loving wisdom of our God when all was seen second Adam to the fight and to the rescue came. O wisest love that flesh and blood which did in Adam fail should strive afresh against the foe should strive and should prevail and that a higher gift and grace should flesh and blood refine God's presence and his very and essence all divine. And in the garden see 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. Your wisdom draws beauty from chaos, brings a harvest out of sorrow, and leads the exiles home. In Christ your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven, and strangers made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as sons and daughters in our Father's house. We who by Christ's power follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of his obedience, now offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for Christ in whom the world is reconciled. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made. Through that dark struggle, death was swallowed up in victory that life and light might reign. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died. Your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love 
and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. We do not presume to come to this, your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his most sacred body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. While this situation continues, that we cannot meet in church and receive the sacrament physically. We pray that spiritually we will always receive Christ to ourselves. Lord, you are grace for our needs, strength for our weakness, light for our blindness, word for our deafness, love for our loneliness, joy for our weariness, peace for our anxiousness, wonder for our dullness, saviour for our hopelessness. Lord, you are grace for all our needs. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Fight the good fight with all thy might, Christ is thy strength and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life and it shall be thy joy and crown eternally. Run the straight race through God's good grace, Lift up thine eyes and seek his face, life with its way before us lies. Christ is the path and Christ the prize. Cast care aside upon thy guide, lead and his mercy will and the trusting soul shall prove Christ is his life and Christ is love Faint not nor fear his arms are near he changeth not and thou art dear only believe and shall see that Christ is all in all to thee. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O glorious Archangel Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Evil, Servant in the House of the Divine King, and our glorious Patron, who shines with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil, and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more faithfully day by day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
May the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.